Hello, this is Diane Dalton. We're going to discuss debugging tools in this lesson. I'm sure many of you have been approached by friends or family members once they've learned that you're learning about computers and you've been asked to help solve their computer problems. Well, I'm going to help you learn how to do more of this and to do it better in the future. So what we're going to do is look at some of the common debugging tools that are used by computer administrators. Um, many of these tools are built into Windows 7 and we're going to also look at a group of supplemental tools that are called sys internals or system internals. These are a group of tools that were initially developed by two men, Mark Rusinovich and Bryce Cogswell in 1996 and they've been continually updated and they've been incorporated or purchased, I should say, by Microsoft so that they are part of the Windows um, but they don't have any support so they're really only supported by the users forum um, so you may post questions there, you can look at other questions and discussions on how to use these to get a better idea um, beyond what you're going to learn in this lesson. So these utilities help you manage, troubleshoot, and diagnose computer problems. First we're going to start with some of the tools that are built into Windows and the way to get to these first is by opening the Windows Action Center which you get from the lower right hand corner there's the little flag icon that opens your Action Center and you can actually get to debugging or the troubleshooting tools and these are things built in again to Windows. Uh, so this is the home page for all of the Windows troubleshooters and you can see it there it's grouped into several different categories you can troubleshoot programs your hardware and sound, network and internet, appearance and personalization, or your system and security. Um, so these are different ways that you can explore troubleshooting. Um, I'll go through a few demos, but I'm just going to give you the overview here in this PowerPoint presentation. Um, other ways to get to some troubleshooting help is just to go to the Start menu and open the Help and Support menu. Um, on my computer, which is an HP, um, they actually replace that help and support menu with their own personalized one, which is just a little bit prettier than the default Windows one, but it will have pretty much the same capabilities um, that you can look at troubleshooting in these different categories, you can get different types of assistance online, um, etc. So now I'm going to discuss a little bit more about the system internals. Um, Again, these are grouped into several different categories. Uh, your file and disk utilities, networking, processes, security, your system information, and then there's some miscellaneous ones. Uh, many times when you go to run these, you're going to have to click on this license agreement the first time you run each one of these. The disk and file utilities, I'm just going to summarize a few of them. Um, there's many more than what I have listed here and you can go on to the website and look at the entire list and the description of each one and get the help page for each of these utilities. Um, so in the disk and file category there's access check, lets you see what user or group has access to which files. Contig, that's short for contiguous, but it's sort of like a version of defrag um, that works on just a few selected files so it will finish quicker. So if you have some files that you work with frequently, um, you can defrag those so that they are read more efficiently from the disk. Um, Diskmon is a monitor that allows you to watch disk activity. Now it shows you a lot of information for every disk read or write that's going on. Um, and then PS File is a program that shows you what files have been opened remotely. So that would be in case somebody is um, remotely accessing your computer, you can identify what files they're getting to. Then we get into the network utilities. Um, TCP View will help you show what active sockets are running. Who is is a nice utility that will help you identify who owns an IP address. Um, when we get into NOS 230, you'll have a class a lot about servers. Um, Active Directory is one of the functions of a server that it can do. Um, and AD Explorer is something that allows you to view and edit those settings. Um, in the Process Utilities category, Process Explorer is one. It's similar to the Task Manager that's built into Windows, but it's much more detailed. We did cover this somewhat in our Intro to Computer or Intro to Operating System class, if you were at RCC. 
Um, process monitor is another one that monitors all of the processes that are running. Uh, PS kill is something that allows you to kill a process should you find a rogue one that you need to um, make it stop and it won't respond to the uh, normal user interface commands. And then a handle or the, the, the tool handle actually shows what files are opened and by which processes. Under security there's several different things. Um, log on sessions will show you all active sessions where someone is logged into your computer and typically you know that's just going to be whatever user you think is sitting at the computer but the system is also logged into your computer but it will also help identify if there's anybody remotely accessing your computer. Likewise rootkit revealer will look to see if there's any rootkit based malware on your computer. Um, sdelete is a secure delete program which actually deletes a file completely by overwriting the disk space where it had been stored. A normal delete only deletes the pointer in the file table. It doesn't actually change the data that's on the disk. So that's how people are sometimes able to recover data even after it's been deleted because the data is still there on a the disk. Essentially the table of contents to that is just no longer there. So the secure delete actually overwrites all of that data to make sure that it's not recoverable. Some system information utilities um, includes auto runs that shows you what programs are going to be run automatically as you boot up. Um, PS info gives you some more process info. Your RAM map it shows you um, how your physical memory is being used and it has several um, different views that you can look at on different tabs. Now here's a few web pages um, or links. I'm going to actually post these on our class website as well that you can get to these. Um, so these are some additional help resources or videos. Um, these are for the um, built-in Windows troubleshooters and then here's some links for the Sys internals. At this point I'm going to switch over and give you some live demos of how to use these different tools. Hello, I'm going to start by showing you how to use the built-in Windows troubleshooters. Now these troubleshooters are things that try to analyze your hardware and software and determine if there is a problem and also try and help you resolve those problems. So to begin with I'll show you how to start the troubleshooters. You go down to the lower right to your taskbar. This is the Action Center, this little flag icon. I'm going to open the Action Center. This gives you any kind of messages that you need to deal with, but we're going to go to the troubleshooting, which says it will find and fix problems. Now it has several different types of troubleshooters and they're categorized. Programs, hardware and sound, network and internet, appearance and personalization, and your system and security. I'm going to, as an example, go through and troubleshoot audio recording. And what it does is it will open up and tell you the recording audio. Um, this is just an intro page. I'm going to go to next. It's going to try and find out if there's any problems. So this takes a little bit while the system is scanning your, your computer. And it came up and found that I do have three audio input devices. Um, so I need to select which one I want to debug. I'm going to use my Logitech headset, which is what I'm speaking on right now. I'm going to go on and click Next. And it's going to detect problems, which hopefully it will come back and say there's no problems found because it is working. Um, and that is the case. Um, now, you know, if there were a problem found, it would probably identify it here. And you could go and explore other options. It might show you other places to get help. But in this case, uh, since the microphone is working correctly, um, it's not going to find anything. I'm going to show you one more example. Um, I'd like you to go on your own and explore some of these. Um, you may or may not have an issue with your computer right now, but I want you to see what sort of steps the computer will take or these debuggers, troubleshooters will take to try and resolve the problems. So I'm going to check for performance issues. Again, we have the introduction page. Click Next. Now it's going through and detecting any problems that there might be on my computer. You can read the steps it's going through if you can read it that fast. Now in my case it found that I have some 
programs that are automatically being start up, started and that I might not need. So I'm going to go ahead and start this system configuration and that will show me what programs are being started that I might not need. Here's the system configuration dialog box with the startup tab and it shows with a check mark all of the things that are started up at whenever my computer boots up. Now you can see I have already unchecked several of these um, but I'm going to look at these and I've done some research on these. Um, there's the Microsoft Office that's starting up that I don't need to have starting automatically. I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to hit apply then OK to exit this page and it is always going to make you restart your computer to do this to make that take effect um, while I'm running this video I'm just going to exit without doing the restart so that will take effect the next time I reboot my system. All right, so I could continue with this troubleshooter it will look for any additional problems and this is the summary. This was the startup that I had already identified and I will need to resolve that when I reboot. Now there's also a lot of tools that are built into Windows that you can run through the command prompt. And I'm going to start that and run it as administrator. I will show you a few of the command prompt tools that you can use for debugging your system. Um, starting with a networking type, we're going to look at IP config. I'm going to use the all switch and that shows you a lot of information here. I'll scroll up here. You can see your physical address. You can see if you're connected. Are you using dynamic um, host configuration so that you'll get your IP address dynamically. Um, IP version 4 address, your subnet mask tells you when you obtain the lease, when it will expire, uh, what your default gateway is. Um, so this is a lot of information you can get for debugging. Um, another one I'll show you is open files, which this does take a little bit of time to run. It returns with the entire list of files that are open currently. Uh, the good information here is that there no, are no files opened remotely via a local SharePoint. And the last one I'm going to show you today is called Path. Now what the Path is, is a list of Windows folders. And when you're running commands through the command prompt, this is the order of places where it will look for that executable program to exist. So first it's going to look in program files, common files, Microsoft shared, Windows Live. And then these each of these folders is separated by a semicolon. And then here's another one, program files, common files, Microsoft shared, Windows Live. So it's looking in both the 64-bit and the 32-bit versions of the Windows Live. Uh, and then it goes on and looks in the System32 folder and Windows System32 WBEM. So it goes through this list. Now, pretty soon we're going to have to change that when you download your sys internals because we're going to create a new folder with the sys internals utilities and we're going to want to add that to the path but I'll add that and show you as we download those tools.